Um, thank you for attending our first guest expert series of the webinar this year, co-hosted with UPS. And I'm proud to incorporate our strong alliance as the search marketing provider for all of the UPS clients. So let's get started. So just a brief background of Net Elixir, we've been around for 10 years um, with a mission to help digital marketers succeed online. We have global offices with our headquarters in Princeton, and we are a growing, fanatically analytical team with over 5.5 million hours of search marketing experience. So now I'll just touch on our three business lines. We have our services um, basically across the board, what we offer to our clients, um, paid search, Google Shopping, SEO, and social media. Also our LXR technology is our own proprietary technology, which is a multi-channel online marketing platform. Within that, we have LXR Marketplace which has over 55,000 users and 170 countries, which is great. And then we also have LXR SEO for our small businesses, which they can utilize our SEO toolkit and task manager. And then we also consult on three different aspects of analytics, digital marketing strategy, and executive dashboard design. So a big focus for us here at NetElixir is to understand the intent behind every click. So who are these users? What are they doing? What are they thinking? What's compelling them, compelling them to click on an ad? So our data scientists have been analyzing all of the search marketing data to humanize or to really understand the user behind every click. Now here's just a quick glimpse of some of the great clients that we've been working with. Um, retail has been a strong focus for us, but we've recently broken into the travel industry. And as I mentioned before, um, we have a strong alliance with UPS, so we've been fortunate to work with them and bring you this webinar today. And one more thing I just want to mention on this page, um, something that's very important to us. We understand that no two businesses are alike. So we take the time to learn the individual details of our clients' businesses, and thus we can create a customized strategy for each one. So that's what we believe really sets us apart. And now just a little bit about NetElixir University. Um, it was launched in 2012 with a vision of democratizing the digital marketing industry through exceptional knowledge and expertise sharing. And we have a goal by the end of this year to share our best practices with over 10,000 businesses worldwide. And if you're interested in joining um, Net Elixir University, you can find us on LinkedIn. And you can even click on the um, LinkedIn icon within this page. So just a little bit now about Ashley Boggs, our co-host. She is the Senior Marketing Manager at UPS in their Corporate Retail Marketing, where she advises retailers, big and small, on the latest innovations and trends to improve the omnicommerce shopping experience. She has managed strategic alliances with Google, Amazon, and Microsoft, as well as rebuilding applications serving over 10 million users across over 50 countries. For 20 years, Ashley has helped companies leverage media and technology to tell their story through various channels. Prior to her decade at UPS, Ashley operated Vision Media, a marketing, multimedia, and public relations firm, and held various positions in advertising sales and media, including roles at CBS News and Jezebel Magazine. She is currently underway to complete an MA in Integral Human Science from the California Institute for Human Science. She currently holds an MBA from the Robinson College of Business at Georgia State University, 
and a BA in Political Economy from Tulane University. And feel free to contact Ashley by email or connect with her on LinkedIn also. Now, our CEO, Udayan, wishes he could have been here and introduced Ashley himself, but he's actually traveling and working on some exciting things for NetElixir. Um, but the two of them have been working together with retailers for the past several quarters and have really made a huge difference in the entire online consumer shopper experience. So now I'll pass it over to Ashley um, as she presents um, on the UPS Insights on the Online Shopper. So let me just pass this over to her. Okay, great, Kelly, thank you, and good afternoon to everybody. Thank you to NetElixir and Uday and Bose for inviting me. Thank you to NetElixir University for being able to kick off this new information series, and welcome to all of our attendees, retailers, and industry participants who have joined us today. Now, I wanted to give you some background. We've commissioned, UPS has commissioned this global study, and we've been working with Comscore now for over five, four years. Um, this is the second year that we have published a global study providing perspective for global retailers on consumer behavior. And we surveyed almost 20,000 online shoppers to generate this year's study. It was published in March 2015. And the goal was really to go beyond other retail studies and give a 360-degree view of the consumer shopping experience across different regions. So what I'll be covering today are Brazil, Mexico, the United States, Europe, and Asia. And there's a lot of information here. You can also get more of this information from the website where it's published at ups.com slash inside retail. And there you can take a deeper dive into even the European study and the different European countries as well as the Asian countries that were surveyed. So here we're delivering insights into shopping preferences and the current levels of satisfaction with online and omni-channel shopping and taking this consumer's pulse on what tactics influence a positive shopping experience. So moving into this, we see the flex shopper. And this is something we've coined. It's the same as the omni-channel buyer, um, the concept of a multi-channel shopper. They are ruthlessly efficient using the device of the hour really as a matter of control and convenience. And we see this across the world. There's not much difference in countries. The level of adoption of technology does vary a little bit. But across the board, we do see the proliferation of all these different types of devices from a mobile phone to smartphone to tablet to phablet and technology, including the ability to easily search and to leverage email and social channels has really um, come clear that digital media across these channels is an influence in the shopping experience. So as we look deeper in the flex shopper and along the path to purchase, we look at the preferences and their appetite for researching and browsing products, and we've garnered some key takeaways here. And this is what we want to impress on retailers, is where they can act. Where can they make changes in their business process to improve the customer experience? And of course, the goal there is creating that experience that drives loyalty and better yet, repeat purchase. So in order to act, we have to be able to provide these three things, alternative options, convenience and capabilities, and a transferable experience between a site, meaning a mobile phone, smartphone, tablet, or even a desktop laptop, and that old-fashioned shopping experience in the brick and mortar store. So let's take a look more at the alternative options. There's really so many, but here's a, a quick recap, and we're going to touch on a few. Again, I invite you all to get the, the bigger research reports and white papers and to delve more. We have limited time today. But a key takeaway, and we see this dominant in Asia and Brazil, is that consumers want options to pick up their packages. And we find that they're looking for these in what we call alternate retail locations. Maybe it's more convenient to pick up your package at the end of the day, um, not at home, but at a drugstore or a florist or someplace you may pass by on your way home, someplace convenient. And what consumers think is convenient really differs. 
Um, we see that Europeans trust their neighbors and like to leave the package with their neighbor, but um, not everybody wants their package delivered at home. And sometimes, uh, if signature is required, you need those alternate locations. In U.S. and Mexico, they seem to prefer options like going to the UPS store or a carrier location, which could include um, in foreign locales, the mailboxes, et cetera, or the new UPS access points. UPS is um, launching these alternate retail locations. We sensed uh, this change in the industry after doing this research, and so now you may have seen some of our lockers show up in Chicago. And so this is a great new shopping experience for the, the online buyer where I can immediately have my order shipped to a locker and get a PIN code uh, sent to my smartphone, stop by the locker, put in the code, and pick up my package. So we've got some of those UPS access points in Chicago, and then we've got the, the other locations in New York, and we'll be expanding those throughout the world. So we're excited about kind of changing up the retail experience for getting your, your online orders. We also see that shoppers seek these type of alternative options for shopping online, and they expect, along with free shipping options, having lots of different payment options, and we certainly see that industry-wide, Apple Pay, and Google Pay, all different kinds of, of different ways to have an electronic wallet. And customers are coming to expect those in the shopping cart. We also see the impetus to provide a guaranteed delivery date. It's not OK anymore to just say that the package is going to be delivered in three to five days. Customers really want to know what that exact time and date is going to be. And so if you're working with a carrier, you should make sure they provide that type of a technology solution for an estimated time in transit. And they want to see that accurate rate so there's no surprises. That delivery time should include the time needed for picking and packing. And the more detail that you can provide the consumer, the type of detail that they're looking for, the more likely they are to make that purchase. Um, those are important options for checking out online. And the best part, of course, is uh, when retailers offer free shipping, it's not really free. Someone does have to pay for it. So the things that a shopper will do to get free shipping um, from our research should be cause for excitement. There's really ways for retailers to make more revenue and have more sales with offers for free shipping uh, by increasing average order value. So if you have a threshold on the shopping cart, you can drive um, additional purchases as people try to add cart, uh, add items to the cart and qualify for that free shipping. Or maybe it's a component of your loyalty program. Maybe it's something you offer your most frequent buyers. Um, additionally, it could be a promotional offer to get somebody to um, turn in their email so that you could give them some kind of a welcome series message and continue to market and make product recommendations to them. So we want to look at free shipping as a way to influence the sales process, um, not, not just um, an expense that has to be passed off, because again, somebody has to pay for it. Now again, we see another increasing demand for this alternate retail location pickup experience. And this came out, this is probably one of the biggest takeaways for me personally, is the increased appetite for this type of an experience. And it's not just rerouting and re-delivering the package. It's actually having on the front end of that retail checkout an option to pick a different type of location to have your package sent to. Many times, well, we've got Mom's Day coming up. And if you don't want your, your significant other, your wife, to uh, see what you got them, um, you know, maybe they get home from work earlier than you, and um, you don't necessarily want that package sitting on the front steps because they'll figure it out. So, there's some different um, cases where having the package delivered to a different location can be really convenient, especially when you're gifting. So moving forward, we want to talk next about convenience and capabilities. And here, it's really a matter of where you are, what time of day it is, and what kind of device you happen to be using. I don't think a day goes by where we're not all walking around with our smartphones. And if you're looking for something to buy, it's just so convenient to be able to search and browse. But ultimately, when folks actually make the decision to purchase, they're looking for 
better imagery, better screen resolution, and, and they do switch devices. So we see a lot of multi-channel shopping. Um, again, we see um, free shipping and preferences for returns. Um, and ship to store is, again, seen as a convenience across different regions as well. Um, ship to store can be another way to get free shipping, so um, consumers like that. And we love this because four out of ten shoppers that go pick up a package that was shipped to store, they actually make additional purchases while they visit that store. So offering ship to store if you have store locations is a great way to get additional sales and to strengthen that relationship with your buyer. And in terms of alerts, consumers still love getting email and text to their smartphone. It's that ruthless efficiency that comes up because consumers are so busy and if you want to reschedule or reroute an order to a different location after the retailer has shipped, that is certainly an expectation of consumers nowadays and it adds complexity to the retailer's supply chain. It's certainly not something beyond a company like UPS. We've had many tools available to do rerouting, rescheduling for years. So. Um, certainly, you can talk to any of your uh, UPS account reps and learn more about that. So retailers um, should definitely be sending the email notifications. That's the preferred method of receiving the delivery information. And uh, many, many folks nowadays um, also are signed up for one of the carrier notification services like UPS My Choice. We now have 13 million members. And if you're not signed up, I invite you to sign uh, yourself and your home address up. And what we'll do is anytime anybody's ever sending a package via UPS to you at your home, anywhere um, pretty much in the world, um, we service so many different countries, we'll let that consumer know that that package is on the way so that they can prepare for the delivery. And it's really giving people the control and convenience they need. Um, we also um, offer the option for retailers to customize those My Choice emails that are sent to their buyers and put their own branding on it. So it's a perfect scenario for expanding your brand and making sure that people get the package the first time and consumers have told us that's what they prefer. Now in terms of areas of improvement, we see the lowest satisfaction in, in this area of rerouting and rescheduling deliveries. Those seem to be the areas that retailers could focus on allowing more changes to be made and different options maybe through potentially order history. So we feel like as retailers are looking to, for ways to differentiate that they could use this research and basically have some takeaways. We also advise folks to have an easier to understand return policy, which we see really important, um, especially in um, Brazil, Mexico, and US, not so important there. In Asia, they do a little bit less on the returning side. And then here it shows some additional delivery service options that folks are looking for. And again, we see um, the email alerts and also the ability to authorize a delivery beforehand, which again, the MyChoice emails can offer you. Ship to store is still seen as very convenient. Um, and here we go into a little deeper insights on when and why it's convenient. Um, some folks um, just like it because of the free shipping. Um, Mexico and Brazil find ship to store convenient for some items. Um, and so um, we continue to see this as a way of targeting the consumer experience based on the area that you're marketing. So you know you may find differences in the Americas um, from potentially Asian shoppers. Asian shoppers tend to, to skew much differently than, than say the US. So there's certain areas where um, we invite you to use this research to basically tailor that customer experience according to the, the audience that you're marketing to. If you're going global, it's important to know your consumers and, 
consumers do have different expectations in different markets. So let's go to the next section and talk about transferable experience. Um, in some articles, um, quite a few articles lately, um, there's a lot of talk about identity management. And that is really about this transferable experience. It's about the old brick and mortar shopping experience conditioned us on customer service and having a sales associate greet us personally, hopefully by name, once uh, we became a customer of that particular store. Um, in the old days, we might get a phone call when some new inventory came in or when items uh, came into a store that the sales associate thought we might like. And so as more online shopping occurs, you know, consumers still want that personalized experience, even though it's coming through some kind of a virtual media. So when we talk about transferable experience, we really want to talk about um, customer service, um, personalized attention, and being able to establish those type of conveniences. And the Global Flex shopper is looking for this too. The, the web or the mobile phone becomes an extension of the sales associate. So um, understanding what device they're using is really important. And as we have more um, cookies and IP detection where you can actually tell a little more about a shopper from the first moment that they land on your site, you can tell what geography they may be in and we have access to enhanced data analytics from things like Alexa.com or a similar web. So um, NetElixir has been doing great work with us and helping um, not only internally for us to understand more, but to, to help our retailers to understand how to leverage these awesome analytical tools in order to plan our business. So um, when, we, when we look at comparing shopping satisfaction now across the globe, make this so you can see the whole thing a little bit better. Um, we see that across the regions, US, Mexico, and Brazil have the highest satisfaction with online shopping. Um, Mexico has the highest satisfaction for in-store shopping, followed by Europe. In Asia, they appear to be ruthlessly critical, but it's probably actually related to their high rate of smartphone adoption, that they have such low um, satisfaction um, at least for the online satisfaction. Asians prefer to shop on a mobile device, 75% of them do, and retailers just simply have not sufficiently optimized the mobile online shopping experience. So it's, it, because they prefer to shop um, on mobile for their online, it's really going to skew the results, I think, in Asia because almost, uh, almost everybody's shopping with a smartphone or a mobile device. And the top concerns that come out um, that reveal some areas for improvement is product images are just not clear or large enough. And half of the shoppers in Asia, Asia say that. 42% um, say product information cannot be viewed easily. And technical difficulties occur when they try to compare products on the website. So mobile shopping um, gives you a bit of tunnel vision. You, you don't get to compare multiple products, and it's really just based on screen size. So I think folks like Comscore and as well as um, you know, our group, we're looking at how screen size increases in the future may start skewing these online satisfaction rates, and certainly how much more mobile shopping will occur as the screen size gets larger, taking away some of those top concerns. Now the other big takeaway is for retail, getting back to the store experience where satisfaction globally is generally lower um, than in e-commerce. And we are helping retailers to bridge this gap. It's, it's a gap between the online, the mobile, and the in-store shopping experience. So we, we really think that's, that's top of mind. So for those of you who just simply work with retailers and are in the industry, um, maybe this is um, a proof point on the level of effort that we have to put forward to help retailers to, to actually ex execute this transferable experience. And it's really important because almost half of products now are purchased using cross-channel methods. So like I said before, 
Um, you may start in the hallway on your smartphone in between some meetings looking at something, and you may only take 30 seconds or a minute to look, and maybe you're Google being searching, and you, you find that item using mobile search. We, we definitely see um, a huge uh, increase in the amount of searches happening on mobile devices. And so um, then you may go to the tablet or to a desktop laptop. Uh, people are crossing over channels. And ultimately, they may actually also visit the store at the same time to go get even more information. And then they purposely leave the store to actually buy the item online. And there's a number of different reasons they do that that are outlined in our study. But the fact is that the, many of these products are being purchased cross-channel. And so that transferable experience becomes more important as more products are, are purchased across channels. We see that the preferred method of purchase here, um, we see that the majority of purchases are cross-channel. Um, they're, they're either um, buying online and then going to store or searching online and then buying in store, but there's, there's a number of different, um, different cases here. And again, it's a matter of um, convenience, but these are definitely uh, omni-channel shoppers and it affects everything from pre-purchase to purchase and post-purchase because retailers now have to coordinate um, across channels, not just the selling, but also the customer uh, service, the returns, um, getting feedback. So there's a lot of complexity, and it doesn't lend well to silos. So we definitely see that reducing the, the element of silos between in-store, online, email, social media, search, and, and how you leverage your domestic versus international operations, everything is really holistically tied together. So it goes without saying that online shoppers prefer to search and, and buy online. Um, this makes search engine optimization more important than ever. Um, but again, because of the rise of mobile, mobile search is gaining in, in importance. And Asia, compared to other regions, has more multi-channel shoppers where Europe is somewhat lagging. Um, Asia is definitely more advanced on the technology front. In Asia and U.S. are very similar uh, in this regard in terms of the advanced device penetration, adoption of new technologies. And uh, perhaps we will see the phablet or even other sized devices in this survey in the future as these surveys evolve. We do change questions and make things more um, relevant and timely. So it's going to be interesting with um, all the new devices that even came out this year. So again, back to image size and product info, um, that creates a lot of friction on mobile devices. Um, when the pages are not big enough, um, it basically causes people to switch channels. And the other thing that comes out um, on why people shop on computer versus mobile device, meaning a desktop laptop, um, is, is also a security concern. We see this especially in Mexico. Um, so for whatever cultural and other reasons, um, there is a bit more concern over you know, fraud or privacy and such um, in, in Mexico. And we, we looked at the post-purchase experience and whether folks have ever returned an online product. We know that returns is no longer just a post-purchase consideration. It's really something that actually drives sales. So it's, it's very important to, to keep track of um, how people prefer to return um, and whether they prefer to return to store or um, shipping back. Europeans mostly ship back. Brazilians mostly go back to the store. Um, and we always advise retailers to make it really easy to return an item back to the store because, again, we do find that when somebody returns something to the store, they actually make additional purchases um, in, a, in addition um, while they're there. So the store is not obsolete. Um, if you have brick and mortar stores, um, it still plays a pretty major role. And the store experience ties well into the mobile device. Um, another part of our research talks about all the activities that shoppers do with their mobile device in the store, like looking for inventory, 
um, that may be on a stock out or um, actually making the purchase and having it shipped home or to a different location, looking for coupons and things like that. And we see with geo-targeting and notifications that you can almost have real-time conversations with your customers on a smartphone while they're in your store. And so we think that's, that's really the game changer in changing that online shopping experience where the online experience has actually also invaded the brick and mortar. So that leaves us um, the end of our review of the global study. And um, I'm really excited to be able to share this information. Um, again, you can go to our website at ups.com slash inside retail. You can there download the global study or you can get the Asia study that goes into the specific Asian country results. The Europe study goes into specific European country results. So if you're interested in what's happening in Singapore or Spain, you could go get those. And there is a separate Brazil, Mexico, and US study that you can access. I welcome you to contact me and or uh, connect with me at, on LinkedIn. And next month I will be speaking at the Digital Summit in Atlanta. If you happen to be there, please look me up. Kelly? Thank you, Ashley, so much for that fascinating study. Since we are a little short on time, I'm going to skip the questions. But again, if you have any additional questions for Ashley, feel free to reach out to her at ashleyboggs at ups.com. And now we'd love to hear your feedback on the webinar. Um, so we are sending out a brief survey that includes also the link to this white paper that you can download. Um, so we look forward to your comments and suggestions on our future webinars. So thank you again to everyone that attended, um, and we look forward to the webinar next month. Thank you so much.